Lady Messenger, honoured guests, ladies and gentlemen, um, welcome to the Gordon Messenger Centre, enabling resilience in the Royal Marines family. I'm Jonathan Ball, Chief Executive of the RMA, the Royal Marines Charity. It's my privilege to have lived and breathed the project that's got us to this glorious opening day today. And I just wanted to set out for you a little bit of the background, because all of you have had a part to play in bringing today to bear. Um, way back in 2013, while uh, Operation Herrick was still uh, fiercely raging, um, Family Support Network uh, here at CTCRM um, began to think how they could better support the families of the Royal Marines community in this area and uh, to think of how they could enable and strengthen resilience across that core family. And we're really pleased today that from back then, in, in 2012, 2013, that Emma Gray and, uh, and Lucy Heaver are here with us. They were part of the original prompting. We've got Simon Chapman, Commandant, unfortunately can't be with us today, but back then he was Commanding Officer of Support Wing. And Simon Chapman badgered Dave Kasapian, who was then the Commandant, to approach the charity and say, look, the Navy isn't going to be able to pay for this. Could you do something? And so there was an original statement of requirement and we thought, bugger, how are we going to pay for that? <laughs> but 2014 being the 350th anniversary, um, George Osborne gave us a million pounds as a birthday present uh, to the charity. And uh, the trustees decided it ought to go into childcare and, and family support across the core family. And that got us going with a project board from within this community and then with ideas for what the centre should be and do. And the vision was to have a state-of-the-art wow factor centre that would draw people in, that was safe within the security perimeter, but outside the wire so that support given could be discreet and the vision was to have whole core family support based out of here because this is the heart of the core. Activities for veterans, for the moral component for serving Royal Marines, families, children. fundraising, particularly by the Family Support Network here and by the Royal Marines Survival Wives. A lot of commitment from the charity trustees to using reserves. And finally, we got round to um, doing all the ground tests and deciding we'd build on four tennis courts. I've never seen a Royal Marine with a tennis racket, <laughs> <laughs> but you know Sport England 
have opposed the planning commission because they reckoned we were giving away valuable sports real estate. We got over that one. We then tendered for a contractor and uh, easily Midas Construction they, um, were, were chosen uh, as having the best offer to put together and build a fantastic design by Peter Town, who's here as well, our architect. There was then some serious fundraising uh, done, and, and many of the donors are here today. Can't name them all, but you'll see the donor wall inside where we're thanking you for your support. The groundbreaking finally took place in April 2019, and all was going smoothly until something happened last March, which delayed us somewhat. But nevertheless, the Midas guys worked through COVID and the building was finished in August and finally furnished and equipped and handed over at the start of December. Um, I'm sure you'll agree, this is state of the art. It has got a wow factor. It will draw people. It will be a fabulous facility. And it's not the building per se that makes it, it's what goes on inside it and what happens here. And so now I'm really delighted to ask the centre manager, Gabby Wright, to talk about the now and the future, because what really matters is yet to come. Thank you. So I'd just like to put a bit of meat on the bones, really, and give you some examples of what we've been able to do. Um, and I think it's fair to say that no, no plan really survives a global pandemic. But actually, um, the global pandemic has given us an opportunity to demonstrate the value and the benefits that the GMC offers to us, and, and has given us an opportunity to show that at such a time of need um, that actually it, it's exemplified itself um, in, in so many ways that, that wouldn't have been able to be done if, if we didn't have a pandemic. Um, so being positive on that note, we've Throughout the pandemic, we've actually been able to reach more people than we did beforehand through very small, contained, safe groups. Um, we have had daily groups every morning, in the afternoon. Uh, we've had monthly Who Let the Dads Out um, family groups. We've had yoga sessions with children, um, all providing that resilience to people at such a time of need. Um, but of course the centre isn't just about the families and the, the, the mums and the tops and the dads, it's about the serving personnel and the veterans. Um, and throughout that time we've also offered courses, we've had the COs DESIGS course, we've had training for uh, first aid courses, um, we've had Commando Chef giving uh, cook-alongs to recruits, we've had drivers training in the car park, um, we've had so many things that wouldn't have been able to, do, to be done at all, especially because we've been keen to protect the, the fundamental reason why we're all here, which is about the training uh, on camps. But the centre has provided the facility to be able to offer such a rich network of support to enable that re resilience within our families and the serving personnel and the veterans and the wider, the wider community and the wider um, of course, the, to be able to, to produce that, facilitate it, is, is all about the mood that's created. And Jonathan mentioned the wow factor. Hopefully, you've, you've had a sense of that from walking around. Um, and, and the idea being that it's, um, it's something that's purposefully neutral. Um, as the very proud wife of, of a, a former Royal Marine and with two children, um, a boy, in the making and probably the girl as well if she gets her own way um, but uh, I, you know, I am not shy at celebrating um, the values and the ethos of the Royal Marines and hopefully you'll see it implicitly embedded everywhere but it's purposefully neutral so that people can celebrate the more overt side of the military over the road and here we can celebrate a more um, perhaps purple approach so that people that have some um, issues that may need to be dealt with more sensitively to be dealt with and people feel that they can relax uh, and it instills a happy and uplifting um, approach and, and a sense of quality of life within. And the benefits of course that that provides is, um, is, is a partnership approach. 
Um, we've touched on some of those partnerships and, and many of you are here to manifest that. Um, but certainly with some of the other visits that we've had from Naval Children's Charity um, and many of the other charities, we, we have a high present, uh, presence from the, the RMA, TRMC, but there are also other um, partners and military charities such as SAFA, Veterans UK, um, White Ensign, uh, the Naval Families Federation and RNFPS all have a presence here to support our serving personnel, our veterans and our wider core community um, to provide that rich richness and the resilience for the benefit of all. So in terms of future focus, it's building on that. It's building on what we have and what we offer already um, and offering a, a wider breadth of opportunity um, and, uh, and, uh, uh, to, to di all the different user groups um, and, and having a wider reach geographically as well. Uh, the point's been made already that it's a core asset, um, so that's, that's an opportunity as well as a challenge to make some of those things attractive, to make people want to travel here. Um, but hopefully um, with, the, with the, the input from a, a wider stakeholder and strategic partnership arrangements that I'm sure you all help us with, and the development of the friends of the GMC to achieve much, much more, um, we, will, we will achieve a lot and help our communities even more. So without further ado, thank you very much for helping us to get to this stage. Um, this is just the start of our journey, and I would now like to pass you over um, for, the, for the next step. Great. Well, thank you very much. I mean, there's so little to add. I thought that was beautifully put, by the way, uh, and absolutely captured uh, what this is about. So rather than simply uh, repeating it, I can tell you it's a huge honour uh, to be here. Um, when I first joined the Royal Marines and walked through these gates uh, a number of years ago, years ago, I did not expect to be uh, passing out the King's Squad as a four star, and I certainly uh, did not expect a centre uh, to be uh, given my name, which is a, a, a huge uh, honour. Uh, can I just uh, reiterate the thanks to everyone who made this happen? I mean, the initial idea and the momentum and the energy that needed to get that going and, 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 and up as a project, those that were involved in and are still involved in the practical utility of the building and the build itself, and of course, the donors and the supporters, I know many of whom are here, but I also know many of whom uh, who are not, who this, for, you know, without whom this wouldn't happen, uh, but equally all the support that our charities are able to provide to the Royal Marines wouldn't happen either. And we are utterly uh, dependent and utterly thankful uh, uh, for it. Um, so those, those who know me know, know I'm, not, I'm not a shy person, um, but I'm, I'm relatively low profile, so when I heard there was a uh, there was a building going to be named after me. There was an element of uh, discomfort about that, but I'm I'm over that now, and I and I reconcile that because it's not about the name that's on the front. It's about what happens inside there, and and, and that has been put beautifully uh, as, as something that is absolutely central to uh, the output to the core. I took for those of you who are at the King Squad uh, chat, I, I, and, and you may have heard, I, I firmly believe in the Royal Marines charity in its broadest sense. Those that are up front and serving, you know, are often in the spotlight, but they're just the tip of the spear. Below that are the charities, the veterans, the support networks, the families, and the loved ones. And, and frankly, we just simply couldn't deliver at the pointy end of that spear if we didn't have that. And that community needs looking after, needs recognizing, needs to be, uh, you know, needs to have space in which to, uh, uh, in, in which to flourish, and that's what the centre uh, is is all about. We must try, I think, and make it for the core as a whole. I think if you were right, that is going to be a challenge. But I'm quite happy with that just developing over time and word of mouth catching on, and the real benefits and utilities of this becoming known to everyone. Uh, and I, I confidently predict uh, that, uh, that 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 will happen. So um, I think my next job. I mean, I don't know if a pair of scissors strong enough to cut the ribbon that I just happened to pick out as I came up the thing. But I think it's now my enormous pleasure uh, to open, I'm gulping here, the Gordon Messages Centre. <laughs> and, and it's an enormous privilege and honour for me to be doing so. So thank you very much, everyone.
Can everyone now please make your way into the foyer while the general opens the out.